Um, right, dapper light pictures. Okay, folds. People go down too deep. This kind of light, this the, these beams of light that come out when the sun's going down, they are very shallow. If you go much more than four meters, the effect of the beams go. It's a very shallow light. You have to stay shallow. And people go in and say, I'm going to do the dapple light, I'm going to get those light beams. An hour later, they come back up and they say, I didn't see them, I didn't see them. No, <clears throat> there were five, six, seven meters and you don't see down there. You get a different kind of light. It's very shallow, it's literally just below the surface. Okay, sun balls. Now, who was who did pictures in the film era? <laughs> oh, quite a few. Okay, and you will know that sunburst <laughs> techniques, close focus, wide angle sunballs, <coughs> were a very very popular shot, often overdone. Uh, and Anne was as guilty as that as much as anybody. But when digital came out, the dynamic range of digital sensors do not handle the sun that well. And when they first came out, 2003, 4, it, they were dreadful. They are getting better, but uh, compact users can still struggle when shooting a sunburst picture, and SLR users can as well. But there is light at the end of the tunnel because um, I did a little bit of experimenting with my D300 which is a great camera but it's not the best, not a full frame and there's a lot better cameras out there now but um, sun balls, as you know something like that you're going to get the red spot straight away and there's not a lot you can do, you can a small aperture f22, a fast shutter speed but the sensor doesn't handle the light as well as it could. <clears throat> okay, what I found recently was if you go down a little bit deeper and you put more water between you and the sun, it makes a difference. And um, I'd never thought of it before because I thought, well, it's not going to make any difference, but water cuts down light. And I went down to say 10 meters and my <coughs> sensor was flashing. I went down to 20 meters, same settings, blow me, was okay. So when I was uh, in Missoula uh, beginning of the year, I did some sunbursts. And all these are within the range of the sensor, so they're not flashing. Um, but I was operating at least 15 meters <coughs> And when it started to flash on my LCD, um, I went a little bit deeper and it had disappeared and we got that dynamic range back. Um, put a, a figure, a person in the, in the shadow of the sun, like a silhouette, and you get this splitting beam effect. But um, we also did that um, on the, uh, the left-hand side and not only have we retained the sun, we've got the beams. So I went round and I was trying to find something uh, suitable round about 20 metres, which I knew uh, for the visibility, which was very good in Missoula, for the time of day, uh, quite overhead, I, I knew I needed to be about 20 metres deep. Never thought of it before, but putting some distance tends to give you some of those facts. So that's not a four or a fix, that's a tip in the trick. Okay, building a picture. Um, I do a lot of workshops abroad. I put people down in situations where um, a picture may need an amount of natural light and, and flash together. And um, I've gone on too quick. And what people tend to do, I find, is they go straight into a scene and get a composition, they've got the flash guns on, and they just shoot away. It's, in my opinion, it's you've got to build a picture. When you've got 
a natural light and you want to use flash you've got to build a pitch up and it's not easy to go straight in with flash and settings and get it right first time and I liken it to the analogy of a recipe a simple cooking recipe you put your flour and water in and you add things to this recipe slowly and gently because if you don't as I found out you kill all the stuff don't you anyway you build it up gently so here we've got a bow shot prop shot of a wreck works in black and white I'm sure it will work with color but when we haven't got any color in the back of our LCD to let's say disrupt the eye we can see we can look at the natural light in the back of the LCD we can consider our exposure and we can think bit too light bit too dark tweak it here tweak it there okay that works let's get the dive as far enough away that we haven't got any identification there's no eyes showing okay got a nice um, prop shot let's build it up what's it going to look like with some flash and just add the flash to it and you choose one you might like it more you might like it less this is inside a wreck um, natural light in the Guyanis D I'm sure a lot of you are very familiar with that so I am going to just pop on one of my flash guns okay I've lit the top um, is it under lit or over lit obviously you can see now I can't tell when I'm in there and I'm adding a bit more that's probably a bit too much but I'm doing it gradually I'm building it up another example this is where it, this, this is quite a challenging shot and if you can get this in the bag you've cracked it the, the old Chris Euler K which I think now has been Chris and the Marcus yeah. they've got the tool room and for quite a period during the morning the light shines through and it lights up the workbench it's very accessible very easy to get to but I see a lot of people going in there flash guns blazing and they come out and they don't get the balance right so what we're going to do is we get the natural light right I'm going to play about with the natural light for three four shots until I, I get what I think is the best and then I'm just going to put a little bit a flash on here and there is that too much yeah probably it is a little bit too much in the corner so again I am I am building it up and last example of this this is a um, just a space in the rock in St John's cave yeah. pretty sure that is that is St John's and I couldn't find it last time I went when I got to this this beam of light was coming through uh, there was some soft coal in the beam and it really kind of uh, I, I had a great difficulty with that so I started off with a vertical um, I went to is it going to work in a landscape format probably not let's go back to a vertical does it need some flash well it's still a bit dull I'm looking in the back of my LCD now all the time to I'm really having a good look at that LCD let's just add a bit to it okay I've got a tad of flash um, on the bit of soft coral um, no okay I don't know exactly how it's gonna look when I get it back into Lightroom so let's <coughs> just go a little bit more and put a bit more on it and I think that was the finished article I counted up how many I did of that just to get to that and I took about 26 pictures this was about number 18 and then I started winding it down again um, so again it is well I find it hard to just go in and do that shot think of the recipe and build it up <coughs> Martin have you tried the HDR? I haven't no I haven't but I might soon <laughs> okay um, a lot of people are often say now nah, can I make them you know processing and I won't go down the processing route now but uh, I've got into like black and white land photography lately and uh, there's a general rule in photography in, gen in, ge in general when colour 
doesn't really contribute to a story or theme you're trying to um, tell, then black and white is an option. And I just really keep it simple and take that down into the underwater. If something, if the colour underwater isn't, let's say, uh, 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 complementing the scene, I consider shooting a black and white. I have changed my LCD to black and white in the back underwater in the past, but I don't do it much, but I'm gonna start doing it more. This is the tugboat wreck at Abergalawa. This is, uh, again, uh, this to me works in black and white, it works in color. So again, if you're just trying to give you pictures, let's make them look a bit different. Um, here we've got the Barracuda in the uh, bridge house. Um, uh, not Red Jazz, it's called something else, but never mind. And um, on the wreck in Bali, off Tull and Ben, um, the Liberty wreck. The, the Barracuda is kind of silver, well that's not far from white. And all we've got is dark shades and, and a muddy coloured, blue coloured water. But what I have started to do quite lately is, there's a term called colour popping. Now, I, I'm, you see it in wedding pictures at the moment where um, the bride's in black and white and they'll just colour pop the flowers. Well, I don't like this, I'm calling, calling it colour popping, but I am thinking about, well, what if we've got colour, but the background uh, doesn't need to be in colour? So I've been doing some of these and I, I'm not sure whether, I, I don't know what to think of them, but I've got, had some good feedback about people seeing them who've thought they've been good. I mean, you get a colourful anemone, uh, sorry, catfish, but the anemone itself, um, they're not always that kind of colour. So does colour complement the scene? Probably not. Very easy to do, very easy to do. Those are taking notes, just choose on your colour in camera raw, whether it's Lightroom or CS or whatever. So if that's orange, go to your saturation tab, leave orange and yellow where they are, and just drag every other colour down into the minus. And that's it. That's it. There's more convoluted ways of doing it, but that's an easy way. <laughs>